Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go through Twitter, see what people are sharing on social media. I'll interject my financial opinions as we go through it together, generally related to three different topics, wealth building, commodity, topics. Uh, so let's dive in there, take a look, and see what's going on. If you wanna follow me, at underscore finance, and if you wanna join our community, finding-value.com, where I go through a variety of things about investing. Um, hopefully, I am opening up the boundaries of your investing wisdom and continuing to push you guys forward uh, as investors to become better and better investors uh, and showing you great opportunities that are in the market across these undervalued sectors for potential investment if you decide to go into those. Uh, Mayday coupon code is active uh, if you want a discount. Going to Nostra, House of Gold, says, remember, the U.S. government wants you to buy Bitcoin, but they don't want you to buy gold nor silver. Why do you think that is? Well, I have guessed that Bitcoin could potentially be uh, developed by the government. It is an intangible asset. So you've got tangible assets and intangible assets. Intangible assets are assets that do not have a physical presence. Uh, intangible assets, a lot of them are financial assets. So you could look at crypto as being an intangible, an intangible asset. And a tangible asset would be something like gold, silver, uh, houses, cars, something that has a limit to producing something or has a quantity Maybe it may not be fixed quantity, um, but it would be a quantity that potentially could be fixed that is has existence in the real world. I think what they did is they're trying to force dollars and money into intangible items to soak up and slow down the velocity of money. So it is possible that people or the government or whoever created all this wants you to go into uh, these intangible assets to soak up liquidity out of the market to some extent. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and maybe the government didn't create it. Maybe they didn't create it. Maybe it's a full of hogwash uh, of people thinking that. Uh, and, and maybe Bitcoin goes up a ton and you know it is a, a piece of technology. And every technology that I have seen that was developed a long time ago generally gets obsoleted. And I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen with crypto and, and other things. That, that would be my guess. Josh Young lowered its global oil demand forecast while maintaining its supply forecast. OPEC plus production continues to decline. So a lot of the times what they do is they start to lower their oil demand. And then they might, in the future, lower the supply of oil. They might do production cuts or hold them out into the future. Maybe. Uh, but that's kind of what people are talking about currently with OPEC. Uh, Illinois is considering a 3% tax on millionaires to solve the state's property tax problems per BI. Okay. Um, this is probably the beginning of states doing things like this. Uh, but what, what you're going to see is you're probably going to see millionaires leave Illinois. The more you try to tax something, the less you get of it. Uh, and that's just physical things. Now, if you start to tax more millionaires, you're going to get less millionaires that are going to stay there if they can leave. So that is one of the downsides of taxing people who actually contribute to society and make a lot of money contributing to society. Uh, in the free market, if we have a free market, uh, what generally occurs is that rich people, uh, millionaires, billionaires, whatever it is, if they truly have earned their, their, their wealth through the free market, that means that they earned or they, they provided a product or service to a lot of people that wanted their product and were never forced to buy that product. So they added more to society than what they took out of it. 
uh, they would be considered the most generous people in society uh, because the wealth accumulation that they have means that they put more good into society on a free market basis that people are willing to do than, 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 they, than what they have taken from society. So what we're doing is we're literally stealing from the most generous, hardworking class in a free market world, if they're earning it in a free market world, and, and giving it to people that are probably not doing the same thing. Using one word, what stops most traders from ever being profitable? I will say that your time frame is, is what's killing traders. They're, the traders are taking too short of a time frame. Uh, investors make more money than traders do historically with less risk. Uh, they also make more money. So and not, what I mean is they have a higher probability of success and they make more money. It's both of those things. So the word, the worst thing about being a trader is that you are a trader and traders don't make money. That's the worst thing. Now, if you're trying to make a lot of money, you're going to have to size up a big move, which then turns you into an investor. It turns you into an investor because traders don't make crap. <laughs> they can make money uh, and, and you have to have a very rigid and, and, and a very good strategy and never break from that strategy. Um, maybe they make some money, but most traders, like 99 point something percent, lose money as, as, as a trader. So are you the 0.01%? I highly doubt it. And I highly doubt that most people, even Steve, I bet you doesn't make a buttload of money. I uh, bet you most of these people don't make much. Uh, and the shorter your time frame, your uh, probability of losing is greater. The longer the time frame, your probability of success goes up because what you're investing in isn't the market's sentiment or emotions. You are investing in the fundamentals of the sector, the fundamentals of the company, the fundamentals of the CEO and what, what he's doing and the strategies that he's deploying. Um, none of that is, is going to drive the stock price in the short, short term. Uh, it's just sentiment flinging around. So in order to be a successful trader, you have to be contrarian and you have to take on bets that other people are not, but that also requires a longer time, a longer term time frame. AG says, they tell you inflation is under control while your grocery bills double. Who do you think benefits from that lie? Um, government. <laughs> it's government benefits from that lie there. So they're lying because they don't want people to panic. Do you think government's going to come out and be like, guys, we're, we're going to print like heck. Your grocery bills are going to go way up. You're going to struggle to survive and our currency is going to eat it. You think they're going to come out and say that in different words? No, they're, they're not going to come out and say that. They're going to lie to you. They're going to lie to you and they have to lie to you to keep everyone confident in the currency. They need people confident in the markets, in the economy. Why would you come out and get everybody ruffled around? They're not going to do that. Uh, unusual whales, middle class wages aren't keeping up per CNBC. They haven't been keeping up since 1971, since we went off the gold standard. 1971, people are getting poorer and poorer based off of their wages. Now, some people will say, well, we've got all this crap in this world that makes it better. Um, some of it I would agree with. Other things, I don't know if it's better or not. You know, I can think back 20, 30, 40 years ago. I'm, I'm, a little over 40 years old. So I can look back 30 years ago when I was, you know, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever it was. And I thought the world was pretty good. I didn't have any problems with it. Now, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't even have pagers at that time. We didn't have a lot of things that, that make this world supposedly that much better. And it mainly is around convenience, uh, and the ability to navigate and transport and, and communicate, I would say, is the, the major thing that has changed since then. But growing up, I mean, go look at how cheap everything was and go look at what people were making. Uh, my parents could easily afford the house that they purchased 
in the in the eighties when they purchased their house. Uh, right now, I don't even think they could purchase the same house having the same jobs that they have, and and that has nothing to do with being paid what they are. Uh, it has everything to do with the government stealing the the purchasing power out of the dollar, which then translates into middle class wages not keeping up. So the, the name of this game, guys, is to make money and convert it into assets as quickly as possible. It's about acquiring assets and never selling those assets over time. An asset is a business. Uh, it is a property that is kicking cash flow out to you. It is stocks or bonds, and I wouldn't put bonds in there. I, I wouldn't even own that. Uh, there are tangible items that are assets. Those are the things that I would go after. Uh, it's all about converting your wage into, into a assets because they are literally stealing the purchasing power out of the currency at a very fast pace. Once people realize that is accelerating the pace, you're going to see that even transfer faster. You're going to see people transfer to assets as quickly as they possibly can right when they earn it. And that's the velocity of the currency increasing. That is what they are trying to stop. They need to keep the confidence in this game so people don't do that. They need to tell you it's under control while your grocery bills are doubling. Because if they lose the confidence, people are going to figure out that I need to buy physical gold, physical silver. I need to get out of the system. I need to go buy assets and transform that cash into something immediately or buy groceries. Hi, he says, second attack wave on silver and oil. So far tonight, my guess is something is up. And what he means is maybe there's something coming. So what they try to do is they try to push this lower so it, it can absorb whatever news is going to be released. Uh, so they try to like give it a little bit of a, of a runway where they cushion it lower. We would see this every once in a while. Uh, whenever the Fed speaks, they they like after and before they they try to play with the the oil market or the precious metals market. Something's always up when they start pushing these things around. Porter says people think this election matters. Spoiler alert: it doesn't. <clears throat> you're not voting for change. You're voting for noise. The real game isn't even on the bailout or on the ballot. Sorry. If something far bigger and far beyond any candidate's control, wake up America. And that's probably the debt problem is, is what he's alerting to. Um, only supply and demand move price action. All else is narrative. Uh, so that's supply, demand for an equity or a bond or a commodity. Um, but what drives it, the, the, so the, that is the first stage. So when something moves up, you obviously have more buyers than you have sellers. But then you want to look back and try to find out what the root cause of that situation is. If you look at a longer time frame, not these super short time frames, because super short time frames can flip on a dime. It's based off emotion. It's based off of fear and greed and all those things. The longer term is based off the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are what ultimately drive the supply and demand for certain equities in the market. And then when you look and you dive deeper and deeper and deeper into the root cause, it is of my opinion that the root cause comes down to a few different things. The demographics of a population, which means that you have more demand for products as more population comes through. Credit expansion also drives demand for products. It means that you've got more credit in the system fighting for the supply that's out there. That is AKA inflation. And that can come from monetary inflation and it can come from fiscal spending, which is government spending, uh, or a potential debt problem that the government gets themselves into, which blows credit up to the upside. So it's a balance bet between credit creation and your population demographics. And then on the ultimate side, if you're looking to balance inflation, it's your credit creation versus your GDP, your gross domestic product. So you need to supply products at roughly the same rate that the currency grows at. 
So your GDP needs to grow roughly at the same rate that your credit expansion grows. If credit expansion goes up faster, which we see during certain periods of time of demographics interacting with the real estate market, then you get an imbalance and inflation comes. And then the supply cannot keep up with the creation of credit. It says not tweeting again until S&P 500 is 4,100. So a lot of people are, are putting these rising wedges and the potential retest up here and then the potential crash. Is that possible? It is possible, but I don't know when the timing is. Um, a lot of people are saying that this big crash is going to come. And I would agree that a slowdown is coming. I don't know if the target looks like that. I don't know if we go down. I don't know if we go sideways. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. Uh, but I do think we will see a slowdown. And I don't think we're just going to continually go up like this. Could there be a blow off top and then we go, go down? That could also happen too. And, and trying to pick tops, trying to pick bottoms, very, very difficult to do. And no one has been able to successfully do it repeatedly. Uh, so what happens is a few people just out of sheer luck get it right. People think that they're experts, but they can never repeat it again in, his, in, in history. So there are people who call tops and bottoms, but it wasn't by a method that is repeatable. Gary Savage, I want to talk about this real quick. It says the administration is going to pump massive liquidity into the stock market, especially the banking sector, to keep it rising into the election. On the other hand, they will try to suppress the commodity sector and prevent that liquidity from leaking into energy and metals. That means we're going to have to endure another frustrating period before gold can break out above $2,700. It took 15 attempts for gold to break the suppression at $2,550. Once it did, it triggered a short squeeze up to $2,700. Hopefully it doesn't take as long to break this time. The more they try to suppress metals, the bigger the ballistic phase in silver will be. Patience will be rewarded. Um, I don't even really care about the short term here, guys. Uh, I own a bunch of gold. I own a bunch of silver. I own a bunch of platinum and all these other things, right? If they suppressed it, is that going to impact my life? Am I going to try to trade this in the short term? I'm not. So it doesn't really matter. But do I think that they're trying to hold this thing down to some degree? They probably are. I mean, for an election, I think they're trying to push stocks up and, and hold commodities down. They want inflation to be low. And then after that, I don't know what's going to happen. Because if you're holding something down or holding something up, that means that you are actively in there doing something. And if that activity stops, well, then now you're open to the free markets. You can go in either direction. So we'll see what happens. I, I, I think that the, the commodity, which means that the pricing pressure is upward, and I think that the stock market is being held up and that eventually the pricing pressure will be lower. How much lower, I don't know, and how much higher, not sure. It could be dramatic on both accounts. Energy headline, OPEC monthly oil report. OPEC crude oil production averaged 26 million barrels per day in September of 2024. It is down about 604,000 barrels per day from August, led by Libya and Iraq. So we are down in supply of OPEC. Uh, Rock Bottom says, we bottom ticked the lows in oil. Now we're watching for a breakout. Um, are we going to get a breakout of oil to the upside? Now, there's some people that say that there is uh, Middle East geopolitics going on, that we could get a war, something could happen, and then this thing explodes to the upside. Okay, it's possible. It very well is possible. Then others say, you know, the war premium is already in there. If we don't go to war, it could definitely go down. Well, that's also possible. It is, that is correct. Um, what are the facts, though? The facts are oil is cheap to gold. That is a fact. I don't know if we're going to get some sort of event. All right. I don't know if, if war comes. I don't know if whatever. All I can say is oil is cheap. Another fact I can state is that the fractal that we have created uh, over here, this whole fractal coming from the right all the, or come from the left all the way up to the right. That fractal looks very similar to the year 2001. In 2001, 2002, that's when oil took off. 
uh, interest rates went down, the dollar dropped, all of those things. I think we could repeat something very similar soon to that. Um, could the market falling impact commodities? Yes, it could. Depends how it falls, depends what it looks like. Uh, if we get a credit, you know, like we're, like margin calls, that might induce forced selling in the stuff that we are in, in commodities. Uh, so yes, this could impact us. Uh, and and the, the dropping interest rates and the dropping of the dollar will impact commodities to the upside too. So you're going to have all these opposing forces kind of hit all at the same time potentially. No one knows that outcome. No one knows that outcome with certainty. No one. Everyone's trying to guess it and they're continually off by some degree. But that is normal. It is normal to not get it perfectly right. Because people who make a lot of money don't make their money trading short-term price predictions. They, they make it by buying undervalued assets and holding the undervalued asset through a certain market condition. Uh, JC says, leading economic indicator is one of the market's most hilarious oxymorons. If someone decided to ignore price trends in favor of government data about the economy, laugh out loud then they deserve everything they get. That's just dumb. And, and he's responding to, JC, I cut the bearers of the past two years from Slack. None of the leading economic indicators of recession, even the historically reliable ones, have worked this cycle. Printing six trillion and spraying it on the economy with a fire hose had never been done before. And that there's a lot of truth to that, guys. There's a lot of truth. So what's what's occurring here? is a lot of people are trying to make predictions based off of historical um, information, it's historical indicators, historical information. Um, when the market did this, this is how it's responded historically. But now we're going through a bunch of things that haven't occurred, and it makes things really difficult to project. That you know the, the yield curve's not inverting, but they're spraying money all over the place. That isn't that, that's true. We've never had a recession. When we've had large fiscal de deficit spending over like three, four percent, and we have a fiscal spending de deficit of about six or seven percent, and and it just it's all muddy, guys. It, 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 I think it's very difficult to to predict anything in the short term. Uh, is record high good? So China's September coal imports hit record high. China's coal imports reached a monthly record high in September. Customs data showed on Monday as international coal prices declined, September shipments were about 47.5 million metric tons. According to General Administration of Customs data, it is up 13% from a year earlier. China's thermal power generation returned to growth in August as heat waves drove power demand and as hydropower output moderated. Demand from the chemicals industry is also supporting coal use, analysts say. Record coal use, record demand. It says the bubble is about to explode. When it does, stocks will plummet and the real estate market will be left in ruins. Well, the real estate market is generally what drives those plummeting prices. So he said it backwards, which makes me think that he doesn't know the correlation. He doesn't know what the leading indicators are. The stock market doesn't drive. The stock market's a derivative of the bond market. And then the housing market is generally what kills the economy. So real estate going down would be an indication that we have too high of interest rates or we, you know, it's too unaffordable in the, in the housing market. But here's the problem. If we get a slowdown, they're going to lower interest rates. And if interest rates go down, it should go right into the affordability of people wanting to buy homes. And that's where you'll get your answer. If housing starts to go back up and all those things go back up when they lower rates, we are not going to plummet as, as much as what most people think because the economy will be strong. Now, the stock market could still get hit. That I'm not stating could occur, but you could lower rates, get the housing market to come back. Uh, construction employment is still up, not down. It's going up. So I, we don't see signs of this yet. What he's saying is, is premature ejaculation here is what he's got going on. Paulo Macro says, my buddy 
Cuppy has come up with a great diagram for you guys to successfully tr uh, trade crude. So did something happen in the Middle East? Are Jews or Muslims really pissed about it? Are they likely to es escalate the situation? Short oil. <laughs> and you just go in a circle. Short oil, short oil, short oil, short oil, no matter what happens. Obviously, it's a joke. A number of indicators showing that a U.S. is in recession. There are zero at this time. Zero indicators that we are in a recession. Well, that's different. That is definitely different. Uh, and, and here is uh, visualize, visualizing the length and magnitude of the S&P's 500 secular bull or bear markets. Uh, here we are from 2000, 2009, all the way to 2024. And there's a big bull market from 78 to 2000. Uh, 78 to 2000, you can see we went double bottom there. Look at that double bottom, guys. And I teach a lot about the double bottom on the website. Double bottom, and then we went all the way up. Uh, these are like big double bottom patterns, and then they, they produce these big moves. We have a double bottom in commodities right now in a lot of different sectors. And we're like right on the upper section here. Notice that when these come up, they come up and pull back. They come up and pull back every single one. Uh, they come up and pull back. Those, those are the lead-in patterns. That's what uranium is like right, uh, like right in here, uranium is. You get, that, you get that nice pull up, pull back, and then you, you're right in that general section. Uh, they don't all look the same, but they look very similar. Oil is also in that same section. So we did our first pull up and this is our pullback and we're right at this corner here for something like oil, in my opinion. Uh, and that's what we've got for today. So we're going to end it there. Give me a thumb up for the content, guys. Give me a uh, join the website, click subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff that people tell you to do. Um, definitely give me a thumb up. And uh, that's all I've got for today. So if you want to join the website, we got that Mayday coupon code. We're going to talk about risk reward uh, of companies and, and kind of dive into that. Um, and they do change. We're going to also talk about portfolio allocation. Uh, some people are like, well, do you do 20% here, 40% here, 40%? I'll tell you what I do. Uh, and it's not like what most people think. Uh, it's very different than what most people think. Um, so I'll give you my opinions and I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, but that's what I've got for today. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.